I'd like to share with you some ideas that really have been born out of growing up in Nigeria. So as a child in Nigeria, I lived in an environment where you couldn't take electricity for granted, you couldn't take water for granted, at least potable water. And many of the things that we take for granted living here in America uh, were for the people of Nigeria not a luxury. And later on, when I had the opportunity to become a faculty member, I started thinking about ways in which I can connect what I do to addressing the problems of people in the real world. And uh, in, in doing this, whenever I travel anywhere, I always look out for problems that I think I can solve. And, and the basic uh, approach that I have is to work in teams. And I ha always have large numbers of people working with me trying to figure out the solutions. And the theme that we have is holistic solutions to problems, to real problems. And whether you're looking at real problems um, related to vaccination, purifying water, developing energy solutions, we work with teams of people from multiple disciplines. So I'm going to talk about just one example of this tonight, which is the activity uh, with the folks at the Impala Clinic. Uh, this is an activity that I stumbled upon on a visit to Kenya. And I think, I hope, I should say, I can convince you that it's an example of how to develop sustainable solutions. So let's start uh, by um, showing you a small clinic. Which is a, a community-based clinic. clinic in Kenya that focuses on doing community medicine vaccinations for people in Laikipia district, a place where there really isn't much. Uh, and if you could put this into context, it's it's a place that's about the size of Wales, where kids would not get vaccinated unless they have these camels that take vaccines to very remote places that you couldn't access by Land Rover. The clinic is one of hope. It's, it's a clinic that provides services to about 312,000 people. In the absence of that clinic, the kids would not be vaccinated and basically, access to community-based medicine would be absent. Right now, there are daily vaccine losses during the missions. So once they open up the vaccines, they have an ice pack and they lose the rest of the materials unless they're able to maintain the temperatures. We can see clearly that uh, the problem is one of getting vaccines to people in remote places. I started off uh, by going to Kenya and I thought the solution was harnessing the energy from the sun uh, using a solar panel, storing it in a battery, and using this to power a fridge. You need to store enough for three days of mission without sun just to make it robust. And these are 30-day missions along the equator. And then you can incline the system to optimize the collection of solar energy. So that's the idea. In reality, uh, the implementation of this is, is quite, quite involved. So we started off uh, with the engineering process. In the engineering process, you imagine all sorts of crazy ideas. And at this point, none of these ideas is likely to work. But you should be open to all of them. And a collaborator of ours, Patrick Karuki, who is an art and design person, actually went on a crew with this mission and came up with one potential idea. Beyond that, we then started to refine the ideas. Uh, and from Princeton, you need access to camels, which is a bit of a problem. Uh, and so in thinking through how we might do this, um, someone in our group had the idea of testing at the Bronx Zoo. <laughs> and uh, so we, uh, we went out and tested what we thought was our first prototype designed by aerospace engineers. As you'll see, it looks something like a Mars rover. <laughs> but uh, from that early stage innovation, um, the testing at the Bronx Zoo gave us lots and lots of insights into what we might do. Uh, and if you're not careful and they get upset with you, as was the case for one handler, they can pick you up with their teeth and lift you up. 
Uh, but beyond this kind of uh, frivolous kind of behavior, they can carry 600 pounds, which is a lot. Uh, they can walk through deserts without water and very, very difficult terrain. Now, in this second generation version, we ended up with a system that we thought we could tilt. And in looking at that system, it was quite clear to me that although we had done all this work, it was just too bulky. And so we went back to the drawing board, we took off the big piece, and this time we had a chance to go to Kenya and Ethiopia. In Ethiopia, the, the camels aren't so well fed. And so in this place called Afar, which is the hottest place on earth, uh, we tested the systems. We found we had an adaptable system that could conform but the Ethiopians wanted to ride their camels. In Kenya, the camels were a little better fed. Uh, the systems worked well, but uh, one and a half years of innovation really didn't have centuries of adaptation from the local people. And, and so what I did at the end of that was to go back to the drawing board again and to ask a very important question, which is probably the question we should have asked at the beginning, which is, how do the local people do it? And how have they done it for centuries, and why does it work? In asking that question, I actually realized that the initial image of what the local people do actually gave us what the real answer is. And they, they simply have a crossbar in front and a crossbar at the back. They have single point light contacts that allow the thing to be stable and at the end, I then thought, well, why not make this out of bamboo to make it sustainable? Why not tie it in a way that allows you to move this up and down so you can adjust it and taper it such that you can fit the hump in between? And so the final solution ends up being very simple, this beautiful, eco-friendly bamboo structure. On top of this, rather than use a rigid solar panel, you can actually use flexible solar panels. Uh, these are sort of leading edge technology and solar technology today. They make the whole process of application as simple as this. And you simply drape over the structure. And by the way, this is a solar refrigerator. Uh, this is powered by uh, the solar panel through a battery. And you can rest this on the side of the camel which means it doesn't have to support the loads. And so where this project is at is it's now being tested. It's sort of being used by the Nomadic People's Trust that run the Impala Clinic. Uh, and for me, it's a good case of learning from the local people and integrating our technology with the culture of the people and the knowledge that they have in deriving solutions to their own problems.